So, hello everyone and welcome to 100 Days in Satisfactory. That's right, we are finally here on a brand new adventure on a brand new planet with brand new scary things to try and kill me. But this one is going to be very different than the last and it looks like up there there's fart clouds that want to murder me as well. So let's go this way because this is a 100 Days video, something that I've never done before and I'm very excited to get working on and those are animals. And they see me run the other way! Just FYI, the first 38-ish hours of the Satisfactory save wasn't intended to be part of a 100 days video. I was going to make a pretty normal series, but after making about 4 episodes, I decided to scrap all of them and instead do 100, 100 days series, because uh, I think that's going to be way, way cooler. And just before we get into it as well, 100 days in Satisfactory is 100 hours in real life. But you are probably wondering how I got here, and I think it's about time that I show you. Ah, God! Why does every game I play start with me falling to an alien planet? And that brings us to here, in this very, very weird looking biome. There's some limestone down there by the looks of it, and a lot of fart clouds. What is this? Is that copper? Oh, we've got to go ahead and scan for iron nodes. Three in this direction, like right next to each other? That looks good. So I made my way over to the three iron nodes, jumped down to try gather some with my chisel, and tried my best to avoid attracting the attention of a very bloodthirsty hog patrolling the area. With some iron in my pocket, I then made my way back up the hill, petted a lizard dog, and built the stage one hub. So for this we need 10 iron rods, which we make right here. Ah, we need to make the ingots first, but there we go, let's dump that in, upgrade the hub. Oh yeah! Got a storage box, we're gonna need to go back down there and get more iron, which means we're probably gonna have to fight this guy. Let's just do it, let's just do it, he won't expect it. Bam! 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 Oh, but Bam! Bam! Oh! Man, you are ugly and very easy to kill. And the following half a day involved me mining more iron, crafting stuff, making an equipment workshop, crafting stuff, making more portable miners in the equipment workshop, fighting stuff, mining my first bits of copper, mining my first bits of limestone, crafting stuff, crafting stuff, crafting stuff, and upgrading my hub from tiers 1 through 6. Booyah! Congratulations, you have unlocked. Building Space Elevator. The hub terminal has been converted to give access to milestones there to ensure you progress along Fixit approved protocols. Future developments should be aimed at constructing the Space Elevator and, as such, initiating project assembly. Good luck. So, our next goal is to build the Space Elevator. It's not really my next personal goal because the space elevator is expensive as hell and I need to automate stuff first. But point is, the hub is completely built. And now we can research stuff like base building, conveyor splitters and mergers and lifts and scanners and mams. Uh, I don't really know what a mam is, but yeah. I guess the next thing I want to go for is this, but my main priority really is organizing and automating more stuff now. With that goal in mind, I started crafting my ass off before building up the absolute most stunning and efficient factory known to man. But not of course without taking a break too. A productive pack of deluxe, yes please. Oh, we gotta pack stuff. Hell yeah, that's more boring to most people, but to me it's fun. Uh, never mind, I'm not very good. Oh yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, no, that's not gonna work. Okay, we're just gonna try that. There, 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 there. Um, <laughs> yeah, I kind of suck. Oh, come on, if this was the other rotation around that I got that. Okay, put that there. I don't know what that is. Put that there, put that there. I wish you could rotate that. Okay, whatever. Where are we? We got 20 seconds left. Screw it, that can go there. Sure, nah, that's not good. Nah, that's not good either. But, boom. <laughs> Boom, I guess. Whatever. Send it. Put other stuff down and get points. Yeah. I didn't have much time left, so I just kind of threw stuff down. Did I do good? Nope. I got one star. That didn't go very well. Got stuff going into the storage. It's so good. Here it is, the grand reveal of the most stunning and efficient factory known to man. 
Isn't it just beautiful? I bet you're all so, so, so jealous. So we're now just under two days into our 100 days, and I'd say we're making some pretty good progress. But now that I've built up a nice mass of materials, I think it's about time that we start building up a proper factory that's actually organized and is maybe slightly better looking than the one we've got right now. And that is exactly what you've been seeing me doing in the background here, building up my first properly sort of designed factory. Basically, we've just laid it out in a nice way. As I built up this factory though, I kind of realised that some cosmetics would help the factory aesthetic a butt ton, so I decided to investigate how I can go about unlocking them. Oh, coupons at a shop. That sounds like something that would be good. Colour selection and material and pattern options. It's gotta be this. Oh, stuff that's been purchased in the awesome shop. Okay, we're going for this one. And the final wires, let's launch. Factory ladders, catwalk stairs, ooh, walls. Okay, this is not what I was really after. Conveyor wall mounts. Ooh, these would be good. Ooh, we can get a coffee cup. <laughs> Concrete pillars, we could use them. So let me just... Sure, but I do want to keep some. Wow, this is going slowly. This is all for one, one coupon. Well, I'll just let that run for a little bit. This is pretty easy. So there we go. Kablooey. Has that always happened? I don't think I've ever seen that. So as we discover stuff, we put it in here. Alien organisms. Yeah, we drag that into there. Oh, does it use it or not? No, okay, so it just it's, it shows that we've researched it. Start research. Start research again. Ah, so if we get 10 of them. Oh, hang on. Although I think we can do this. Yeah. Medical inhaler. What is this stuff, though? Mycelia? You know what? I, I think I'm just going to try and figure that out later. Oh, oh, oh. Hello. Hello! How did I not see this? Concrete foundation material. Asphalt foundation material. They look the same. And we've got the same thing for the walls. Okay, I can at least change out the foundations. I'm gonna do that. Concrete or asphalt? Concrete or asphalt? I think we should go for concrete. All right, are you guys ready for a 100% optimized factory tour? You better be, because we're doing one. What I didn't realize until recently is that each machine shows you how much of an item it consumes per minute and how much of an item it produces per minute. So these miners put out 60 iron ore per minute. And of course, then they split up into these two smelters, which use 30 per minute and output 30 per minute. Then once they come out of these smelters, each row splits into two. So 15 end up making it into here and this makes 15 per minute. The same happens along this line. This splits into two and this uses 15 per minute and the other half from both of these leads up to 30 which goes down here and I'll show you where that goes here in a minute but these ones that use 15 per minute also output 15 rods per minute and that merges into one line of 30 per minute which goes into this splitter which divides it into three so each of these lines one going across here one going straight into there and one going up here is 10 rods per minute and they go into one two and three constructors each of which uses 10 per minute so that is perfectly optimized and each one outputs 40 screws per minute these two producing screws just come straight out here and merge into that storage and this constructor which I kind of had to just jam in here because it's the only open space I had just goes up over this middle section and then merges again and in order to not have the conveyor belts overflowing this one between these two is a mark two and this one is a mark two so this is filling up super quick the plate production here hasn't changed a whole lot these output 30 these use 30 and they output 20. They merge into one line and go straight into this. But now I should show you where the remaining 30 from these two smelters go, which is downstairs. So we've now got this concrete area below. It's not supposed to look super fancy, but I needed some room for extra machines and I wanted to do this anyway. So it comes down this elevator lift coming out the wall, but this is a line of 30 going into a splitter. So there's two lines of 15. This uses 15, outputs 15. The outputs merge into one line of 30 rods, goes up there and straight into the rod bin, which means this entire factory is indeed 100% optimized. Everything's flowing at the perfect rates. Whilst I was building the factory, I did find a couple tiny nodes near the base. So I got myself some sulfur and coal, and I believe that I can put the sulfur into the MAM and try to unlock something. Start research. Okay. Oh, I can now scan for sulfur. That's really cool. Is there any sulfur anywhere near me? And I think this is showing why I haven't found a sulfur node because there is literally not one within like a thousand meters, which I think is pretty much, oh, oh wow, yeah. 1500 meters away, <laughs> jeez. But I don't have a need for that yet, so whatever. Oh, and I can use the coal for this, but I don't have enough sulfur in order to do that. The fix-it coupons are so ridiculously hard to get. It's not powered right now, but it now takes something like 15,000 points to get a coupon, I think. So every time you get a coupon, the amount you need to get a coupon 
increases. So it's going to get very insane very quick. Yeah, here it is. So I don't know if there's going to be something to unlock here. What is this? Uh, open drop pod? Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Where is he? Where is he? Fire breathing guy. Fire breathing guy. Fire breathing guy. No. Oh, that made me jump. Kill him. Get him. Give, please. Thank you. Die. Thank you. Anyway. Drop pod. Ah, so I, wait, what? I can like repair it with modular frames? Uh, well, I definitely don't have those yet. Can I pick up any of this stuff? Oh, hello, wait, nine modular frames. Hang on, is that what I needed for this? It is, what? Okay, a hard drive with fix-it data, analyze it in the MAM to salvage its contents. I got some computers too. All right, hello, Mr. MAM. Uh, hard drive. Scan hard drive. What? That takes 10 minutes? Come on. Whilst waiting for the man to finish researching the hard drive, I decided to unlock both part assembly in the hub and to finally construct ourselves the space elevator. The space elevator is what you need in order to advance in this game. You upgrade the space elevator and that unlocks next tiers in the hub and you can unlock the parts of the tiers in the hub from there. In other words, you need the space elevator to advance. So this is a very important step on our journey. Here we go. So analysis hard drive is completed. Select your desired reward. Alternate blueprints. The production rate of this is really awkward and the production rate of this is pretty clean. 15 per minute and in the assembler if we use the normal recipe this only makes five per minute. So I think that this one is just a bulked up version of it so you can make it in mass more so that one definitely seems the best. So that's really cool. I would really like to get out exploring so I'm gonna head over in this direction I think towards the sulfur nodes. I'm going out to explore just new biomes try find more nodes. I also need a alien organs and stuff like that. What is this? Oh, what is that? Oh, what are you? Uh, no. Are you angry? Are you? I can't even tell. Yes, they definitely are. They definitely are. Oh, my, 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 my aim was good for those two shots. I mean, I've whiffed it now, but oh no. Die. Did I get all three? I feel like I didn't get all three, but it looks like I got all three. What's this? Alien carapace. Oh, that's just like this. Okay. And what are you? Power slug. Collecting power slug. Hold up. Is that thing right below me another one of those? No. Is this a cave? And what is this? Uranium? Oh, oh my god, that does so much damage! That does so much damage! E, 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 e. No! <laughs> what? So, we're back at the hub. <laughs> Do I have anything? No. Can I run over and get my body? I think I can. Is it still going to be in the radiation area? Probably. I don't move very quick. If I die very far from base, I'm going to be very upset. Oh. Oh, that's nice. It says up at the top of my hood here where my crate is, so I can get all my stuff back and I'm never going to lose where it is. Uh, I think I see, yeah, the uranium's right there. Did I actually get any uranium? Because if I got a little bit, that'd be nice for the man. I did. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh, come on. And we're back at the hub. So I think the main reason for that is because I didn't realize you spawn with lower health. So let's heal up first. Um, we, We've learned don't go near uranium. Uranium is ridiculous ridiculously scary. Back over to the crate. Ooh, give me some more nuts. By the looks of it, we're gonna need a lot of nuts. Where's my crate? I think there's a cave there and I want to go into it, but if it's radiated, then no thank you. Where is it? Where's my crate? There it is. Okay, we gotta jump in, slide, take all, leave as quick as possible, eat. Why am I still radiated? Why? I don't get it. <sighs> And we're back at the hub. I think I might have just had a brain moment. In my crate there is uranium ore. I bet you that's what's doing the damage. I bet you it's nothing to do with being near the uranium. Yeah, look at that. We're so far from the uranium. There's no way. So, oh yeah, see? Yeah. Hang on, did I get all my stuff? I think that's all I had, right? Okay. Okay, <laughs> we're back on our feet. Don't go near that crate. I kind of want to get rid of the uranium, just make it cease to exist. Um, but nah, let's just leave it. Oh, although I do, I did want to see that cave. Okay, got our health back. Hopefully this guy isn't going to murder me too. Okay, you friendly? Kind of? I don't know. I'm... Oh no, wait, no, no. Yeah, he does the fart thing. Get in the cave. <gasps> I've made a grave mistake. I've made a grave mistake. Please don't fart. So these guys produce the fart bubbles when you go near them. And this cave is full of them. Oh no. Picking up multiple fix it personnel in the area. What? Proceed with harvest before it's too late. Well, I can't proceed with harvest because I'll die, but. Um. 
No, I can't harvest dim, dim nuts, num nuts, whatever. Um, okay, let's just leave. Other fix-it personnel in the area? There's other people down there? Question mark? Probably dead people? Because I would be dead if I went down there. That that was really scary. That, that, that was creepy. Suck it! I need your organs for research purposes. Damn it, I hate these ones. They're so annoying. Okay, thank you. Give me your organs. Bye. Oh, hi. Beacon Akagic. What? Oh, you know what? I think I've seen these uh, mushroom-looking dealios in the map alongside the nuts and some kind of berry. Hello. Please don't murder me. I hope that big guy's friendly. Oh, for God's sake, not more of those. Okay, I've separated these two. Oh, Jesus. Just die. There you go. Give me your organs. The space elevator from all the way over here looks so cool. Let's take a scan for where the sulfur is again. Do you reckon I can make that jump? I should have brought concrete. Okay, we made it. Oh, now we might be stuck here forever, but I was hoping that I'd be able to jump into the water. And hopefully there's nothing in the world that'll murder me. Let's just cannonball, because there's no way we're surviving all that. Oh boy, please deep. Oh, bad dudes. Oh, are those the berries I was looking for? You suck. These guys are a lot weaker, so I'm not as scared of them. Pale berries. That is definitely what I was looking for. Okay. Ooh, this area looks cool. Ooh, it looks it's like a golden slug. Over there, in case you didn't see it, I kinda didn't point to it. Whatever, let's just go get my slug. A yellow power slug. Oh, hold up. Is that over there? Hang on. That looks like more rubbish. Rubble. R wreckage <laughs> Rubbage. Oh no. I bet you I can get another hard drive from over there. Hopefully. I want to. Hard drives are cool. I don't want to swim, because swimming kind of boring. So I'm going to go over this land bridge that I spotted up here. Hey guy. You suck. Bang. <laughs> they get scared so easy. I just hit you once, but And now you're dead. No! I'm nearly dead. Oh, oh. oh! Dangerous. Danger zone. I'm in the danger zone. No! Danger. Danger. Bad. Don't hurt me off the cliff. Don't hit me off the cliff. Don't kill me either. Why are you so strong? None of your friends are that strong. No. Oh, water? What's this? Caterium. I've heard of Caterium. Oh boy. That guy was so much stronger than all the others. Are some of them stronger? I don't know. Oh, that's something for the mammoths. Well. Oh, for God's sake, the fart material though. How do I get out of this situation? Can I jump down here? This is exactly what I was trying to get over, but I don't have much of a choice, so let's just jump. <clears throat> there was no water there. That's fantastic. Thanks, game. I'm gonna run out of nuts so quick. I'm gonna be nutless. Oh, yeah, you're totally bigger than the rest of them. Got a dodge and weave. Yes. Ow! <laughs> I slid right into him. How are you actually not dead? What is this? Get around this rock. Can't find me around the rock. You probably can. I'm up here. Don't think you can touch me up here. That was intense. Is there something up on this rock? Because it seems I can get up here. You are the worst. Also, I think you keep teleporting back to where you spawn, which is very annoying. If I fall off here, I think I'm dead. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Artifact. Summer Sloop. Work in progress. <laughs> so I'm grabbing something that I can't even do anything with yet. But it was down there that I think that rubble was. So I need to slowly work my way down here. Oh, hold up. Is this cold? Pure too. Shh. No. Please don't be stronger than the regular dudes. Okay. We're good. Don't worry about it. Let's go ahead and mine a bit of this. There's got to be coal power in this game, right? That's going to be like the next step from biomass. And I expect that to be fully automated so I don't have to go and deforest everything, which would be really, really nice. Might as well also do a scan for the sulfur, which is now in this direction. Maybe I'll go up there because this is uphill. I can't get back up here from jumping down to the rubble. Okay, that's enough. I can't be bothered. Let's go over and see if we can get some sulfur. This area, I gotta say, is kind of gorgeous. Raw quartz. Okay, so new resource. I wonder if that's going to be something for the man. Where's the Caterium? I can't see it. Oh, it better not be up there. Oh, no, it's right here. Oh my god, there's four? Five bad guys! That looks like a mega bad guy over there. Don't go near mega bad guy. I don't know what to call them. Should probably, like, think of a name or find out what their name is, but one at a time, preferably. I want to find out... Oh, man. <gasps> oh, Jesus! They're so camouflage! Yeah, give me the carapace. Okay, what note is this? Normal. That's not bad. Uh, again, I don't know what sulfur is used for yet, really. But I'll grab a hundred or so of that. This waterfall is gorgeous. Oh, man. Gays, guys, game. Hang on, I gotta get a shot for the outro card. Oh, I completely forgot about the rubble that we saw. The space elevator looks so, so cool through the trees. Also, don't I? Yeah. I haven't been using this, but I have like a flashlight. Oh, and the moon there. Ooh, more stuff. Something I haven't got before? No, this is... Ooh, this is pure iron, though. There's three nodes. If they're all pure, this is my... 
Oh my god, that's two pure nodes. I should have brought beacons. I don't know why I didn't. Oh my god, that's three pure iron nodes. This is the future location of our insanely huge iron factory. 100% unless we find a place that's better than that. But I can't imagine anything better than three pure iron nodes right next to each other. Go away. Stop it. Three pure iron nodes all right next to each other. And they're lined up really nicely. Oh my god, there's another. Please be pure. Oh. <gasps> Four pure iron nodes. Oh my god. I don't know what that is over there. I can't tell from this far. Looks like potentially more iron or something I don't have. Could that be quartz? If it is, well, I mean, we're going to have to go have a look over there anyway. Also, this is the lake I was hoping to cross the whole time. So yeah, the rubble's down there. Okay, perfect. And all the way down there, it looks like we've got a purple slug. I was wanting to have a look at what this was. This is pure limestone. We have a pure limestone node next to base, but still. Now, I want to get down there, but the question is, how? Oh, you know what? I should... Oh, there's a slug there. Oh my god, there's so much stuff. I'm spotting everything. Give me the slug. This is a pure copper node. There is only one here, but still. That's four pure iron nodes. Ooh, more sulfur. That's four pure iron nodes, one pure limestone, one pure copper, and potentially some quartz over there which I'm going to go have a look at in a sec. Also more Caterium. Oh, oh, I didn't mean to fall down this just yet, but is this another pure limestone? So that's two pure limestone, four pure iron, and one pure copper node right next to each other. Is this around where I thought the quartz was? Yes. And you know what? I really do think that is quartz. Oh, and is this more Caterium? Thank you. Surely there's Caterium nodes somewhere, right? It's right below me. Oh, there's two. There's two. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> bad, 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 bad. We're racking up quite a lot of organs and stuff. Anyways, this has got to be quartz, right? Right. Oh, and it's pure. At least this one be pure too, because this would be so... This this area is insane. This is pure too. Oh, this cliff face is the most ridiculous resource spot ever. Oh, oh my God. What the are you? What is that? It's a huge alpha spitty guy. I am not fighting that. I am not fighting that. Please let me run away. Please. Please don't be following me. That is huge. Well, that just 100% confirmed my, like, alpha theory because what? He's ginormous. Uh, I reckon we'll be able to jump down here without taking too much damage. Hold up. Is that an alpha guy? I'm just hoping he can't get up here so I can at least, like, check out this drop pod. For this, we need one singular rotor. Please be a rotor lying on the ground somewhere. Of course, that means I have to go down to that guy. Modular frames everywhere. I'm not seeing anything that looks like a rotor, though. Can I get back up here? I don't even know if I can get back up. Oh, hi. You're there. Do I just run and grab the modular frames? Nope, he's right there. I don't think there's a rotor here. If anything's a rotor, it could be that. Oh, it doesn't look like a rotor to me. <gasps> Did I just see you get up on the rock? Don't see me. Just don't. Don't see me. I'm running in. I want to see if this is a rotor. Oh, it's a motor. <gasps> mm. Is a motor what I need? Because I thought it was a rotor. Are they different? Oh, fireball. Oh, no, but I can't go back up there because there's another big guy, right? Unless it's the same one somehow. Because this is the ramp I was going to go down. But then I saw the big guy and he scared me. Bauxite. That's new. Hey, big fire breathing guy. <laughs> I'm hoping. I can't slide because I'm going uphill. But I'm hoping if I dodge him even enough, he won't hit me. And if I get too far away, he'll just teleport back to where he spawned. And that'd be great. And it seems to have kind of worked. So I'm proud. Now watch me jump down here and not have the thing that you need to get it. Was this what I needed? Nope. It was a rotor. It was a rotor rotor, not a motor motor. So I think this is going to be a uh, comeback later scenario. Okay, let's go. Do I have to swim or can I maybe get up on that thing that's going over the water? The little bendy ribcage looking dude? Yeah, let's let's work our way back to base a bit. Can I get up this? I can. Good. We're just about back to base, finally. We didn't actually end up going super far, but we did find a lot of nice stuff. And it looks like our factory is just running out of power as we're getting back here. After getting back to base from that crazy adventure, I used a bunch of the resources I gathered along the way to complete some man research but to put it bluntly I didn't unlock anything particularly interesting and there was way too much to show individually. I did however unlock overclocking and trust me that bad boy is gonna come in handy. All right, so next up, what I've really got to get going is more automation. I've got to automate more of my resources because I'm still wasting a lot of time sat here AFK crafting components. I think the two obvious ones that need to get done first are the copper components and limestone into concrete, and we'll see where we can go from there. Before we do that, though, I've got the 50 smart plating that we need to upgrade the space elevator, and I've got the resources needed to unlock coal power, so I want to mess around with that before we get to the copper and limestone. Before I do that, though, I want to make myself a pair of blades. Blade Runners, which I unlocked through the MAM along with an Explorer vehicle, which I can't make yet, unfortunately. And I unlocked that using resources that I gathered from temporary outposts that have since been taken down. And I had those outposts for Caterium, Sulphur, and Quartz. So on those MAM trees, we're a lot further along now. So I'm going to go 
ahead and run over to where I think the coal nodes are. Is this a cave? Uh, I found these coal nodes when I was on the way back from exploring. Oh, mycelia! Is there going to be anything else down here? Oh, is that a summer sloop? Heard a noise. What is that? What is that? Spider guys? They look small, so I'm not super scared. But maybe I should be because they're super fast. No. Oh, damn, they do damage. They do damage. Oh, I killed one, though. Okay. They're scary. I don't like them. I don't like these. These guys are really creepy. Okay, maybe we just try run past these. <laughs> Ooh, oh, okay. Hello. I don't think this is the way I came in. I assume that's like the main room and the rest are just different entrances. That's what I'm hoping. Although this does not look like a different entrance. This looks like a humongous cave. I didn't know there were caves in this game. Oh, that's a big one. The small guys were scary enough. What is this place? Sam or can I get out of here? I just want to build my coal. Really? <laughs> that's kind of all I wanted to do. I may be lost. You don't see anything. Oh! <gasps> Jump scare! Please let me out. This is not a dance. I'm begging for help. I'm screaming for help. Please just let me out. Let's get rid of them. Don't want to be messy. Oh, hello. An exit, I hope. Kind of? I can't tell. Outside. Am I by the ocean? Oh, I have a map. Ooh. Is this more rubble? Oh no, there's these guys. You're dead. You're, you're, you're dead. Okay. Industrial beams, screws, more motors. Oh, heavy modular fr- Oh no, not enough space. Kind of have redonkulous amounts of these on me. So let's do that. That might be enough to make an explorer. I'm just saying. Open a door on it. Aha, here we are. I don't know what that means. Okay, well, I've not seen that before. Ah, there's the base. Which means I think it's in this direction-ish that we need to go to get to the coal. Ah, I think that's it down there. So we've got normal. Well, lots of creatures, but then we got another normal. And then we got another normal. Yes, normal. So let's get started. And so I began trying to figure out what I need for optimized coal power. I found out that each normal coal node with a Mark 1 miner produces 60 coal per minute, and that a water extractor produces 120 meters cubed of water per minute. The coal generator consumes 15 coal per minute and 45 meters cubed of water per minute. So I decided to overclock the water extractor to 150%, making it produce 180 meters cubed per minute, which meant that one water extractor and one Mark 1 miner could power four coal generators. And there were four coal nodes at this location, so we could have a total of 16 generators, each producing 75 megawatts for a total of 1200 megawatts. But for some dumb reason, I decided I wouldn't record it, so here it is completed. Bingo bango, we got the power. I then went ahead and optimized our limestone production, which was a simple 150% overclock on a pure node to produce 180 per minute, split into four concrete constructors using 45 each per minute, so that's optimized. And lastly, for this automation extravaganza, I started optimizing in copper components. I had one miner overclocked to 150% producing 90 ores per minute. That split into three smelters and running through six constructors total. Here's a neat little diagram just to make it easier to understand. Hopefully it's useful. Anyways, next goal. What I want to make right now is an explorer. Yeah boy, look at that. Oh yeah. Yeah, 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 look at this. We've got a freaking car. This is really cool. <gasps> no, we should not. We should not screw, screw through it. I'm going to die. Ooh, okay. Oh, uh, oh boy. Oh, oh Jesus. It's kind of hard to control, not gonna lie. What happens if I just... Oh no, I'm onto the factory. Oh God. Uh, <laughs> I think I've broken it. Uh, okay, there we go. This is gonna be so cool. I can't wait to go properly explore. Oh no, we ran over a berry bush. But I can't wait to go exploring in this thing. And trust me, I'm gonna go exploring in this thing. It does seem to eat up fuel. But with that out of the way, I decided my next goal should be steel production. Before I got into that though, I kind of realized that most of my storage was full. So I installed some smart splitters so that whenever my storage was full, the items would overflow and could keep being produced and they would go into the awesome sink. And that would of course earn me coupons to spend in the shop. All right, so I think where I wanna put this steel factory is up on the cliff where we found all those crazy iron and copper and quartz and sulfur and whatever else nodes we found up there. The important ones for the steel are the four pure iron nodes, although I don't plan on using all of them. And there is also one pure coal node up there. And so far, the only other use we have for coal is to do power generation, of course. And because that one's so far up the cliff, it'd be a pain to use down in this factory below because we need water up there. Or we can move the coal down, but I think this is just better use for steel. So I'm heading up here to try find where that coal node was. I don't think it was too far away. Ah, we were right next to it. The coal is 
is right here. What have you got over this cliff here? Not a whole lot by the looks of it. I think the quartz is just up there. So if I build this steel factory right here by this coal node, then I can bring some iron in from all the way up there. I started off by making a foundation way bigger than I thought I'd need. Then I placed down a foundry to see what inputs we need, which as you can see here is 45 coal and 45 iron per minute. The pure iron and coal nodes will output 120 per minute, but overclocked to 150%, they'll output 180 per minute, which splits into four foundries evenly. This time I'm going to use a manifold logistics setup rather than a load balancing setup, which I've been using so far, for the simple reason that it's more compact, and I really hope that I'm using those terms right, because I'm not really sure. So once I hook up the power, get coal coming in and connect to the iron line, I need to start thinking about what components the steel needs to be made into. Steel beams, steel pipes, got 180 steel ingots per minute coming out. The steel beams will use 60 per minute, and the steel pipes will use 30 per minute. So two constructors making steel beams will use 120 per minute, two constructors making steel pipes will use 60 per minute, 120 plus 60 is 180, and that's how many ingots we are producing. So that's what we've got to do next. So these lines have now been fed into the storage containers. All we need to do is hook up the iron and hook up the power. And just like that, the steel factory is up and running. I then headed back to base to sort my inventory. They came straight back to the steel factory to pick up some materials before returning right back to the base to unlock logistics mark three and advanced steel production. Among other things, this got us an industrial sized storage container, mark three conveyors, and most importantly, a mark two miner, which doubles the resources produced from a node. And that is a massive upgrade. And with those Mark II miners, I decided that the first thing that I should upgrade was my coal power plant. Before I did that though, I had to place down five power storages, which can maintain 500 megawatts of power for an hour. And that would be necessary to jumpstart the entire system. And whilst those power storages were charging, I decided to grab my coupons and go on a little bit of a shopping spree. We even locked some new stuff in here since I last looked as well. I imagine that's because of the steel. Indoor lighting, floodlights, these frame pillar sets and structural beams and structural frame sets seem awesome but I really need the roofs. The catwalks and walkways would be great too and pillars I imagine will come in useful but I also really want some gates, conveyor walls, windowed walls and inverted ramp walls and ramp walls and Ooh, steel framed windows, they look cool. I also really want the wall power outlets though. Ooh, there's a grip metal foundation material that we didn't have before, as well as a steel wall material. Man, this is gonna be hard to decide. I have 29 coupons. The roofs, I'm gonna need, right? I think we can leave these signs and the lighting for another day. Steel framed windows look awesome, and the ramp walls are gonna be important. These, I'm definitely gonna need if I wanna start decorating factories more. So we'll add that. Our total right now is 17. So we have 12 more to play with. Let's get that number down to 10. I really like these steel walls, so I think I'm gonna get them. And you know what? Let's go for the catwalks. I wanna play around with them. Let's go for it. Buy all. <laughs> oh, look at all this new stuff. I'd only built my current plant recently, but with this upgrade I could double the size of it, and in that double the power, so the first step in upgrading it was of course to demolish it. And just in case you're wondering, I got enough encased industrial beams to make the 4 Mark II miners from wreckages around the map. And here it is, our brand new coal power plant, double the size of the last, producing 2400 megawatts of power. This beast will probably end up getting taken down eventually and replaced with a bigger one or a different fuel source, I'm not really sure. But I reckon this is going to provide enough power for the remaining 55-ish days that we have left. So being nearly halfway through our 100 days and with our brand new coal power plant constructed, I think it's about time that we start tackling our first mega project. So to speak. Now I wish I could go ahead and make this all look nice, which I, I mean I kinda could since I do have some more cosmetics unlocked thanks to our recent splurge in the awesome shop, but the truth is I don't have everything that I need to design an aesthetically pleasing factory, and that's kind of the big driving factor for doing this whole 100 days video right at the start of the save, so that I can make progress and get to the point where I can make these good looking factories in smaller videos in the future after this one's come out. Anyways, yeah we're gonna be starting our first mega project, and that's gonna be up on top of the cliff where we start our 
steel production. Up there we've got pretty much everything we need to produce all the resources we need in mass at this point. So let's get building. So first I started off by mass producing our three basic iron components, those are plates, rods and screws, and I needed a whopping total of 24 smelters and roughly 40 constructors just to keep up with the three Mark II miners that I had placed on three pure iron nodes. Once all that was being produced I started working on making reinforced iron plates that I forgot to record. On top of that I made modular frames and rotors. These somewhat advanced components don't exactly have great production rates in this mess of conveyor spaghetti factoriness, but the important thing is that we're producing them automatically and as I survive in the world we will amass a decent amount of them. I mean seriously, just 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 look at this. This is this is what I've created. This isn't even half of it. This is, it's Man, it's 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 awful, but it's gorgeous. I then headed back over to the steel factory and started making some more advanced components, including encased industrial beams, which we needed concrete for. Luckily, we had some up on the cliff here too, and versatile framework, which we are going to need to upgrade the space elevator. And followed up by making the mess even worse by producing stators, motors, and the other two parts we need to upgrade the space elevator, which are automated wiring and smart plating. Finally, I figured I may as well automate some quartz materials since there are two two pure nodes up on the cliff as well. So I chucked down some constructors to make me both quartz crystals and silica, which we are going to need for the glass walls and ceilings and stuff like that. And just like that, Spaghetti Central has been constructed. We're now producing a whole bunch of better resources and I'll throw up at absolutely 10 out of 10 rates on screen now for you. A look at that. Super swift. So now that that factory has been built, it's going to take a good three or four hours, I think, to uh, get all the automated wiring and versatile framework and smart plating to upgrade the space elevator again. You can see how much of that stuff we need in the top right. In fact, I just worked it out and it's going to take just over four hours to get all the smart plating we need. So I want to do something in the meantime. First off, while we were building that, we got a few more fix it coupons. So we've now got seven and this is now taking like, well, that must be like 150,000 points to get a coupon now so it's, it's getting really difficult. I'm really working towards with these coupons being able to build a factory that looks really nice. The most important things we need right now are structural beams, maybe concrete or metal pillars, these structural frame set. There's a whole bunch of other stuff as well that would be super nice but the ones that I want to get right now are the glass roof materials so we'll add that to the car and then it's between the steel roof and the tar roof material and I've actually just realized I can only afford one of them but I think I want the tar roof anyway so I'll go ahead and buy both of those. Really I should install some overflow systems onto the factory up on that hill, especially for the reinforced iron plates because that storage is already nearly full. In fact, real quick, let me let me just do that. I think that's smart. Throw on a smart splitter to this line. Down the center we will have steel pipes and then to the right we will have overflow. Throw an awesome sink there because who cares, it's very disorganized already. Attach that to there and these should go through and feed into the awesome sink. Oh right, power. Boom and boom. Oh wow, wow! That seems to have helped our speed a lot. They are very, very good. Okay. I might as well also do it on these quartz lines because I'm pretty sure they'll be good. So again I can just attach it to this line, this is overflowing already and they should flow into there, perfect. Oh right, power. <laughs> Ooh, it looks like this is going to get us some real quick coupons. So cool, that should ever so slightly help us build up our coupons quicker. But there's definitely some more stuff we can be doing until we've got the space elevator upgraded. I want to go out and explore some more. I feel like there's so much of the map that I haven't seen, so I don't really need much to prepare for this. Bring in some extra fuel with me and I think I want to head through this little valley. So let's get zoom in. I think in order to get over that lake, I'm gonna have to go up here and then jump down into the valley. Why? Bad decision? Oh! Oh! Yeah, the game doesn't like that. The game doesn't like that when that happens. When that happens, the game don't like it. But I should bring some concrete in case I need to build up to areas. We are over this now, which means if I can get up this rock, I can just cannonball down! Whee! Man, that, that worked surprisingly well. Is that evil guy still here? Yep. I know what's down here. I've never been this far. Whoa, this bit looks interesting. Again, I've never been down this far. Lizzy Duggo, hello. Is that like a black splodge? Could that be oil? I don't know if oil is an actual resource in this game. Obviously, I haven't got to it yet if it is. I also don't know if it'll tell me when I get to it. Oh! Oh, it is oil, but you look like an even more advanced guy. Oh my god. We got the normal ones, we got the alpha ones, we got the mega alpha ones now. That's great. Okay, well, now we know where some oil is. Oh yeah, this is totally getting deserty. I feel like a desert would be a fantastic place to build a mega factory. I feel like the desert would be a great place to make it look good because you don't have any mountains in the way. I don't know, it's worth thinking about though. Ooh, we got another drop pod. Oh no, is that another mega mega man? Mega mega man? It is. Did just he killed his friend? What an evil dude. You! 
Oh, Jesus. You're an idiot. You're an idiot. You're strong, but you're an idiot. Smack him in the butt. He's not doing anything. He's dead. Wow, that was surprisingly easy. We got a bunch of circuit boards from here, and we need 10 rubber. I didn't know rubber was a thing. It's gonna be an entrance to the desert, or is it just like a big old mountain? Ooh, it looks like it might be an entrance. Oh, yes. Best spot for the, the little buggy that I'm driving. Oh. Oh, my God. The poor thing. <sighs> He got massacred. Oh, that waterfall's gorgeous. Some pure copper. Wait, is that, what? This is pure. Okay, this is normal. Impure copper, ew, gross. This is a really nice oasis-y area with the waterfall. An impure limestone? Okay, maybe the desert just sucks. Another impure, wow, okay. Desert nodes just suck the big one. This is gorgeous though. Impure, brilliant. Woohee! There's a normal iron, another normal iron, an impure, another impure. I think I'm gonna stop checking all these because they're all impure or normal. I haven't seen a single pure. Yeah, this is my bauxite though. So we got a little bit. That isn't a thing in the mam, so I have no idea what box is used for. I've never had a proper node you can mine. What the f- What are you doing? This vehicle's great. Honestly, when stuff glitches in games, it makes it so much more fun. Ah, oh, where the golds look. Oh, and a big guy. You suck. Ow, I suck. Die. Die. Da da die. He died. Oh, crater. Normal, another normal, impure copper. Take a look over the edge of the world here. That's terrifying, but that's cool. Waterfall off the edge of the world. And we got some normal coal here too, that's pretty neat. A normal limestone. So, no, pretty sucky. I can't help but feel like we've seen everything the desert has to offer. Oh no. Pretty much just sucky copper, limestone, and iron nodes. Maybe I should travel on foot. Oh, there's a drop pot, but it's in the farts. I'm gonna grab some stuff, just like, you know, real quick. Oh, let's get out. Let's go, 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 go. Batteries? Used as fuel for drones and vehicle. There's drones. I want drones. And radio control units. All right, let's get up here. Looks very similar to the one the mega factories built on the edge of. Crystal oscillator. Oh, no, but it needs power. This edge of the world? No. <gasps> that looks scary. I don't want to go down there. Man, this swamp with the sunset? That was cool. That was that was some good timing. Huh? Oh, look at that. Bounce in the water. What am I, Jesus? I don't know my goal. Oh, what the... What? That's the biggest one I've ever seen. Biggest one I've ever seen. Oh, my God. Oh, turns out who's really weak. Heat sinks. What do we need? Crystal oscillators, which we have. But it needs power. These, these guys are just annoying, honestly. They're everywhere. Oh, the map seems to... Oh, no. Oh! <gasps> We're back at the hub. Uh, I'm so slow. So far away. Whatever. There we go. Another set of Blade Runners. So exciting. Nuts. Oh boy. This is going to be a journey. Oh, I don't have, I don't even have a weapon. I should have made a weapon. I thought I spawned with a weapon for some reason. I don't really intend to fight anyone. I'm just going to run away from them. Uh, yeah, I would have not remembered this. Man, that is in an awkward place. But I got my stuff. Wow, that looks insane. Should we go down there? Because we're here. Hell no, I'm going home. Can I just zoop my way up the cliff? Okay, progress. This is a great use of my resources. Can't delete all of this, but... All right, we're heading back to base. Just gone through that cave. This place looks awesome. Dude, I don't know which biome's my favorite. It's waterfalls, and there's the pink trees up there. What's down in this? Oh, a hole to the abyss. Regardless, this place does look great. I'd love to build something down here. <laughs> Issue is, I've, I've got to get up there. That's the way back to base. Oh, Matt. Oh, does this waterfall go into another hole? It does. Cool base location, just saying. Foreshadowing. Look at all this. He is gorgeous. Ooh. This is cool. Can I see anything particularly interesting down there? Looks like we got some salmon, drop pod. That's all I can really see. I see the hub. I'm legging it through here. I'm legging it through here. I'm legging it through here. Bad move. Bad move. <gasps> no. Let's get to the map. Let's get to the map. Don't die. Don't die. Don't die. Ah. Oh. 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 Oh boy, that was so close. Wait, maybe it wasn't the edge of the map. Maybe it just had really thick fog. Can I make this jump? I don't think so. <gasps> I'm just going for it. I'm going for it. I'm going for it. I'm going for it. Oh my god, this is gonna be close. No, it's not. I'm gonna make it. I just don't know if it's deep enough. Uh, oh, that was cool. There are parachutes. Well, 
we are back. That was a very interesting journey. Oh my god! Hooking up those overflows was amazing. Seven coupons! We are getting points so quick. What do we want? We want everything. But mainly, I think we want structural beams and concrete pillars. Thank you. So at that point, I ran around the mega factory to grab myself some resources, then went straight to the hub and unlocked literally everything that we're able to right now. That includes vehicular transport, jump pads, and freaking hyper tubes, which of course, I couldn't help myself but mess around with. These things are overall pretty cheap. First thing I want to test out is the... Oh, that's cool. Okay, let's do this because I want a shot for the space elevator upgrading. I want to be able to see it. This should get us up on the cliff, right? And just, I assume, why? <laughs> That's pretty cool. Maybe you can use it as a kind of makeshift elevator when you're building vertically, or to jump from one factory to another, I don't really know, but this is pretty cool. Uh, the U-Jelly landing pad takes biomass. I don't want to make some biomass. This is, all it does is generate a speed jumping jelly, so you don't take fall damage. So there's not really anything to check out. But let's get a hyper dude. Chip, chip, blah, blah, blah. Let's put down a support first, maybe. So if I grab this, don't know if this is gonna work. I don't know how it works. I'm confused. Okay, let's put a hyper tube going down here then. I want to try and make it so it, it lands there, because that's where all our copper stuff is, and it's a pain to jump over. I don't know how long these will go. Looks like they reach pretty far. Okay, this is like the limit. So, and this will slowly go. And then maybe I just smack an entrance onto here and walk into it. Oh, need to power these too. Boom. Do I need to do one of the- Okay! We're going. What is that in my head? Is that the Blade Runners? <laughs> Stangling off the bottom of me? This is pretty cool though. It's not super fast, but that's okay. If we're here and we need more copper components from over there, I can just go bring. That's pretty cool. What I've got so far is definitely not using this to the best quality it can be used. Now, I'd be lying if I said I hadn't watched a little bit of Satisfactory on YouTube. Now, I don't know how you make one of these, so I'm kind of just crossing my fingers and hoping right now. So does this... Nope, I've done it wrong. What if I make it go upwards? So we get that. How, how, how is this gonna work? Oh, dude, that kind of did work though, didn't it? So I think it's time to consult YouTube again because I really want to do this. I think it's super fun and I have a ridiculous amount of time to kill. One YouTube video later. All right, give it. Let's see if you work. Whee! <laughs> yes! That's better. Oh no. We're all good. That was really cool. You can make those a lot more powerful though. Added a few extra pieces on. Let's see. Yay! Oh no. I'm dead. I'm dead. There's nothing I can do. I'm dead. <gasps> That's not good. Please let my crate be above the world. Back at the hook. <laughs> We're all good. How do I make a parachute? Also, how do I make this even bigger? Three more segments. Oh, this is gonna make us five parachutes too. <laughs> Are you ready? We're going! Oh! Dude! Dude! Parachute? <gasps> you wanna get to the mega factory? This is how you do it. I'm leaving that. I'm using it. That's staying. Dude! Can I slow down? Yeah, holding S did slow me down. That's so cool. And I aimed it pretty much perfectly, just saying. And we've got another 50 smart plating ready, which means we still got a long way to go. That is game changing. That is so cool. I'm so happy I did that. I mean, obviously, never, never would have figured that out by myself, but I will leave a link to I'm Kibitz's channel down in the description. I didn't even watch his tutorial. I just looked at it on the screen at the start of the video and copied it. That is gonna be so fun to play with in the future. And at that point, I pretty much ran out of stuff to do until I could next upgrade the space elevator. So I decided to just wait around for the resources, but I may have gone a little bit early in the process. Say we've got everything. 
All I want is the space elevator upgrade. Oh, yes! After, After all, all these, these years, years, finally, I have, have them, them all. all. No, don't fall. Ugh. It's time to upgrade the space elevator. Let's do it. All right. And here we go. Seal and send. Oh, yeah, 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 get me up here, get me up here, get me up here, get me up here. Come on, stupid. Boom. Oh, that looks cool. Oh, damn. It didn't do that the first time. Is it coming back down? I can't tell. No, it is. It definitely is. Man, that took a while to get down. And there we go. This space elevator is back here. That was pretty cool. But obviously, the best part about all this is what we've unlocked in here. We've got... Ooh, it... Oil processing, right. Oh, and that's how you get plastic and fuel. We can scan for oil now, although we do know where some nodes are. Packaged fuel as fuel for the jetpack or vehicles, but jetpack. And then the industrial manufacturing. These things, looks like we need those for the next space elevator. Modular engines, computers. Oh, we can also make a gas mask. I think that might enable us to explore the farty areas. And then we can get expanded power infrastructure. Oh, and the jetpack, that looks expensive. But that's something we can get in the future. And monorail train technology and better pipes, which actually I do need for my coal plant at the moment. But I think the pretty obvious thing to go for here, we need plastic and rubber for a lot of these next upgrades and more power. So so let's go for oil processing. All right, let's get oil factorying. Let's go. This is very confusing. Ah, okay, so that's not as bad as I thought. So all we need to do is input crude oil. We can get plastic and heavy oil residue or polymer resin plus water. We can make rubber with crude oil and we also get heavy oil residue and residual rubber, polymer resin, water. And we can turn heavy oil residue into fuel and we can turn crude oil into fuel and polymer resin. All right. So I guess the smart thing to do would be to get these oil extractors and refineries going to get ourselves more power, plastics, rubber, and whatever else. So off I went to build our very first oil extractors. Just FYI, the satisfactory map is going to be updated soon, or it might already have been updated by the time this video is coming out. And part of the map that's being revamped is where we found those oil nodes when we went out exploring. So instead, I did a quick scan and found some more oil nodes off in the distance in a safe location, which is where we're going to be building this factory. In order to make these extractors and refineries, I needed an absolute truck ton of motors. So I went over to the mega factory to reconfigure some logistics sticks to save up some stators that then could be crafted into motors. And whilst those stators were being made, I brought over a whole ton of resources to the oil nodes to prepare for building this brand new factory. Whilst I was doing that, however, I got my explorer stuck in a lake. No, <laughs> god damn it. Ah, ran myself over. Oh, again, fought a weird gliding spitter guy. What the hell are you doing, buddy? Just gliding around like that. Killed a whole ton of creatures. Why are there so many of you? Ran over a space giraffe tick penguin whale thing. No! What? Uh... And now we can build our factory. So these oil refineries are honestly pretty weird. First off, we have four nodes, two normal and two pure. So we have 720 oil in total being produced every minute. And I split that three ways into plastic production, rubber production, and fuel production. So they were getting 240 oil each per minute. For plastic and rubber, it was pretty simple. I split them into eight refineries each. But the issues kind of began when the heavy oil residue that both of these recipes produce started coming out. So in order to keep those machines running, I had to transport the heavy oil residue into four other refineries that could turn that into additional fuel. And the final 240 oil I sent straight into four refineries to make fuel, but they also produce a byproduct, and that is polymer resin. So I split the 120 polymer resin we were making every minute into two more refineries, one producing plastic, which uses 60 per minute, and one producing rubber, which when overclocked 150%, also uses 60 per minute. There we go. I think that should be the oil refinery completely finished. So over there, we've got a node of 240, and that is making our rubber. We've got another node of 240, right there and that is making our plastic. The heavy oil residue from both the rubber and plastic areas are being fed into these four which are making excess fuel and these four, the actual ones making fuel off the bat, are fed by the two 120 nodes right there. These ones making fuel off the bat are outputting the, I've forgotten what it's called, they're outputting the polymer resin and I'm combining that with water coming from this extractor here to make some extra rubber and some extra plastic. And I don't have anything to do with the fuel at the moment because I don't have a generator that can 
use it. But right now, this is where we'll drag it out from and that's where we'll put the generators. Although I definitely saw some kind of generator in the hub after you upgraded the space elevator. So that's what I want to go back to base to see if we can unlock it. All right, I'm going to smack that in there. Check on my coupons. 27. We're going to be able to go on another shopping spree soon. But now let's see. Ah, right there, the fuel generator. So I have everything. The only thing that I'm not sure about is the computers. We've got 86. Oh, and we'd have to unlock this to make computers. Whatever, you know what? I think that's worth it. Does mean I've got to sit here and craft a ton of mowers. So I unlocked the computer recipe and put down my first temporary manufacturer to make the computers and heavy modular frames that we needed. Just throwing in the resources manually at this point before finally getting enough resources to unlock the fuel generator. Wow. And I did, but then I looked at the cost of the fuel generator and I wanted to give up. It's expensive, so... Yeah, maybe, maybe not yet. Oh yeah, and I also bought some stuff in the awesome shop. 28, definitely want the coated concrete. Definitely want industrial walkways and structural frames. I think these stairs would be nice too. Inverted ramp walls, conveyor walls. How much are we at? We're at 30. Okay, we've gone over. Uh, I don't need the stairs. Let's buy. So, uh, what now? I guess more factories to get more motors and heavy modular frames and computers. Sure, I guess. That's gonna be fun. And that's exactly what I did. First off, I had a couple things to decide on though. The first being how many materials I wanted to make and the second being where I wanted to make them. Firstly, I decided that the ability to make one fuel generator every minute was a good goal and I've been wanting to build on the desert for a while so I figured that's where I should go. To make our fuel generators we needed these materials right here but we could already scratch off the rubber because we had that already and the next easiest task was quick wire which I did super simply just like this. But then I looked at our power consumption and that is way too high, so we're gonna need to get more power in order to get more power. God, this game is fun sometimes. Yeah, so each of these coal miners right now powering this bad boy. Where is it? That, that bad boy. These are all producing 120 coal per minute right now. I can easily overclock this to 200%, double that, split it into two paths, then literally double the size of this again. And there it is, a freshly updated coal power plant. I decided to only increase my power output by 1.5 times rather than doubling it, mainly because I just want to get to work on this power plant factory and I think that'll be enough power for it. And I also just kind of can't be asked building the power plant. <laughs> but now that we've got that out of the way, we can get on with this factory. So let's get building it. So I've worked out all the resources we need to produce the components needed for one fuel generator every minute. And these are the raw resources we need to extract from nodes, minus the quickwire and rubber because we're already producing those elsewhere on the map. And because a fuel generator isn't actually something you craft, it's something you place down in the build menu, these don't all need to be made in the exact same place. I'm doing most of them in the desert just because it's easier, but I can go ahead and grab the rubber and the quickwire from those other tiny factories and that's not a problem at all. So we need 365 copper, 750 limestone, 1160 coal and a whopping 3100 iron. This is gonna suck. Getting all the iron seemed like a really daunting task, so I figured I'd work my way up to that, which meant I wanted to start with the copper. I used two nearby pure nodes at 100%, producing 240 ore per minute, and one at 52.0833%, producing the remaining 125 per minute. And I even built up these little minor buildings, but I'm not really sure if I like them, so I don't know, they're just kind of here now, I guess. I also decided to transport all my resources over conveyors placed on top of these steel frames, which I think are kind of our best option for aesthetics right now. Obviously in the future we can use drones and trains and all that jazz, but I don't have them yet. Actually I do have trains, but I don't really want to use them yet. With all the copper being extracted, I moved on to the limestone for which I used two pure nodes, one overclocked to do 100% to extract 480 per minute, which is the max that my conveyors can transport, and the other miner I overclocked to 112.5% to extract the remaining 270, so that's both our limestone and copper completely done, or uh, completely being extracted at least. Moving on from that, I started on the coal, which was way at the other side of the desert. I needed the coal to make steel ingots, so of course I needed to extract an equal amount of iron. That amount is included in the 3100 that I mentioned earlier. It's not an additional 1160. To get the 1160 coal and 1160 iron, I used two pure nodes for each resource. 
overclocked to 200% to produce 480 per minute, and one normal node for each resource overclocked to 166.6 recurring percent to produce 200 each, and that gives us a total of 1160 per iron and coal. At this point I was very burnt out from jacking so many resources so many miles across the map, so I figured I'd start manufacturing the limestone and copper components. This bit I really enjoyed, this is definitely my favourite part of the game. It's not a particularly big build or anything this time around, but it's probably the best looking thing I've made so far. It's just not quite as much of a mess as the spaghetti central that we made earlier. So in this first building I had 12 smelters for all of my copper ingot needs, which I then belted out into another building, but I'll talk about that here in a minute. In this same building I also had 12 constructors turning limestone into concrete, half of which were working at a simple 100%, but the remaining 6 I had to clock to 177% just to deal with the awkward numbers that I had coming in on the conveyor belts. And that's all I have to do with the concrete for this entire build, there is nothing else I can really make with limestone at the moment, so I can pretty much forget about that for the time being. But back to the 365 copper ingots, I transported them out into another building where I could make the basic components out of them, and I could detail you all of the conveyors and constructors and all that jazz and how I made it all work, but instead I'm just going to tell you what the components I ended up with were, which is 100 copper sheets, 240 copper wires, 45 cables being made every minute. So I can now forget about both my copper and my limestone for a good while, but now that I've got those two buildings made, I want to give you guys a quick tour of what they look like, so I'm going to throw you into that right now. So we've got all our limestone and our copper coming in up there, and we've also got the coal all the way over there, but we're not going to talk about that right now. So that comes down into this building initially. We can go in through this bottom entrance, but first I want to show you upstairs. Conveyors are all coming down, they go below the floor, and you can see I've got these little signs here just showing how many we have on each line, which I think is a neat little detail. Over on this side we have, I think it's, yep, it's 12 smelters all smelting the copper, and that's smelting all the copper that we've got into ingots, because of course we can't do anything with a raw copper, so we need it to be ingots first. And then over on this opposite side we have got 12 constructors, the six along here are dealing with the 270 and that's optimized, and then the six along there are dealing with the 480 which is optimized, but the reason that is optimized is because I've had to overclock each one of these to 177% and you can see we've got all these really nicely laid out power lines and stuff. They connect really neatly and we've got lights going here. But anyways, as you can see the conveyors go down here so we can take a look down and see what's happening down there. This is the copper, just goes straight into there. And these two limestones were a little bit awkward to get into there. And then this one just goes wraps around the outside and goes into these ones right here. And going back down here again, the concrete I'm not doing anything with right now so 250 is just sitting here. And we've got 365 copper ingots moving up there. And that makes its way all the way down here into this second building where we are making all our copper components. And I'm just using a manifold system. The thing is, these are all, oh wow, they already have, pretty much. Okay, well, it'll take a while for the machines to fill up, but because everything's going to fill up first, Manifold works perfectly fine. So all of our resources right now are landing here, making 100 sheets, 240 wires, and 45 cables. And that uses the exact amount of copper ingots that we are producing. So this is all perfectly optimized as well, which I'm very happy with. And I, 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 I mean, it's not Oh, auto save Scott, damn it. It's not the most gorgeous thing, but it's 100% better than the monstrosity that is Spaghetti Central, our quote unquote mega factory. This is way more mega than the mega factory. But yeah, it's turning out really well so far. So we've got all of our basic copper and our concrete being made up. And the next big things that I have to work on are our iron and our coal. But the issue is I have basically no encased industrial beams left, and so I think I'm gonna have to leave that for a while. So what I think the best thing for me to do is make a very temporary but more efficient factory here to make these encased industrial beams. We've got plenty of coal and iron around the place and we've got plenty of limestone so we can just mass produce these encased industrial beams here temporarily. So I think that's what I'm going to do next. And just FYI we are at 71 out of 100 hours so far. So I got to work on building up some temporary machines to produce encased industrial beams a lot quicker. To do this I dragged the coal that we were mining all the way on the other side of the desert to our limestone and copper and I set up a couple iron miners right next to those buildings too so that I didn't have to transport those so far because trust me getting the coal over here was a bit of a pain. I then set up a handful of foundries to make these steel ingots and a handful of constructors to make the steel beams. I then dragged those steel beams over to another set of constructors and siphoned concrete from the machines that we already had set up to make it. And just like that I now had a much steadier supply of encased industrial beams to drag us through this project. Whilst waiting for a decent stockpile of those to fill up I got to work on making my more permanent foundry setup, but I can't really think of a way to explain how I did that in a voiceover so I'm just going to throw you into the game right now. So just 
to recap, we need 1160 iron and 1160 coal coming in every minute to have all these steel ingots that we need. So to do that, I have two lines of 480 and one line of 200 for each iron and coal. The two lines of 480 are coming in on this side of the foundries. So you've got two lines of 480 in the coal going right there. And you've got two lines of 180 in the iron coming in right there. As you can probably expect, they feed through into all of these foundries, except the ones on that side. So each line of 480 goes through 10 foundries. Each of these rows is 10. Of course, these steel ingots just come out and they get fed all the way along there to the other stuff. But a line of 480 does not get perfectly used up by 10 foundries. So the remaining resources from each line of 480 move into this line of 200 and combine with that. Same goes for the coal down there. These use 40 every minute so each row of 10 foundries is using 450 per minute but these are of course rows of 480 so these rows combine into 230 iron and coal per minute and that moves along here and combines with the iron that's coming in from this side the leftover is another 30 so it's 260 same goes for the coal down there and then that 260 runs through all of these foundries so we've got 260 each of these use 45 260 divided by 45 is 5.7 so we've got five foundries here running at 100% efficiency and this last one here right at the very end is at 7.7 recurring percent efficiency. So we are using all of the iron and coal we've got coming in perfectly and we are producing steel ingots through all of them. And I haven't decorated it yet because I can't be bothered. But now we'll go back to the voiceover. With us now producing 1,160 steel ingots every minute, I brought them over to a whole new building to make pipes and beams. I needed 130 ingots to be made into pipes to make stators. I needed 225 ingots made into pipes to make heavy modular frames. And I needed 800 ingots made into steel beams to make encased industrial beams. Getting all of those logistics figured out did prove to be pretty difficult, but I did eventually figure it out. And now all three those outputs are separated and ready to go on at their manufacturing routes. So the last raw material we have left is the majority of our total iron. We needed 3,100 in total but we're already extracting 1,160 alongside our coal to make steel meaning we need another 1,940 coming in and to do this I used three Mark II miners overclocked to 200% on pure nodes to extract 480 each. I also had two Mark II miners on normal nodes both of which were overclocked to 200% and then I merged those lines together for a another line of 480. And lastly, I smacked a Mark 1 miner on an impure node, underclocked to 66.6% .6 to get the final 20 ore that we needed. With 1,940 ore coming in and each smelter processing 30 ores per minute, I needed a grand total of 65 smelters, all piled up in what has got to be my favourite build yet. And it's definitely in a style that I want to pursue in any future factory builds. The machines in Satisfactory are so well made and I feel like it's a bit of a shame to always cover them up with walls and ceilings. And this style lets you see them all working away, even from a distance. In hindsight, I do think this could have been done a little bit better, but in regards to developing a building style, this is a huge step in the right direction. But by this point, I was once again running low on encased industrial beams. And I had both my steel beams and concrete just sitting there, already being crafted, in doing absolutely nothing, so I figured that making the encased beams was a good next step. The encased beams will eventually be made into heavy modular frames, but until then I'm able to produce 50 encased beams every minute with the materials that I already had on hand. With these last couple parts of the desert project, it's sort of been two steps forward, ten steps back when it comes to building style, because my god is this extension ugly, and goddamn is the desert slowly forming into spaghetti. But I'm not gonna lie, at this point I'm really starting to feel the time pressure. We're now at 86 of 100 hours and I still have a lot more that I need to do here in the desert before the time runs out. With that being said, let's get on with it, shall we? It's time to start crafting up all of our basic iron components and those are plates, rods, and screws. And we're even using one of our fancy alternate recipes for once. So just like the lines we had coming into our smelters, we have four lines of 480 ingots and one line of 20. Crafting up these basic components was one of the more monotonous tasks of the project since we needed somewhere around 120 constructors if I had to wager a guess, I'm not really sure on that number. What I ended up doing was roughly using one line of 480 on each floor of the factory. And before you get too far ahead of yourselves, this one is goddamn ugly. I mean seriously, you don't even expect it to be laid out, out even remotely well. At this point I just want to get the desert project done as quickly as I can. 
because by the time I finished setting all this up, we only had about 10 hours left before our 100 days is up, and we still have a lot of work left to do. Plus, I would like to actually get the fuel power plants up and running in that time as well. After all, that is what we've been working towards this whole time in the desert. Anyways, I ended up with perfectly split lines of our basic iron components ready to be dragged down their crafting trees. Our first line is 260 screws, our second is 750 screws, third is 150 rods, fourth is 1000 screws, then 300 rods, then 1250 screws, then 450 plates. So now that we've got that all made up, we can start working on rotors, reinforced plates, modular frames, and all the other jazz that comes alongside them. Again, there isn't a whole lot to talk about for this part. First off, I tackled the rotors, which we made right by our basic iron components, followed by reinforced iron plates that were then made into modular frames. Next up was stators, which I made over by the encased industrial beam and steel area, and then I had to run all the way over to our oil plant to pick up some plastic, since we need plastic to make both the circuit boards and the computers, but we're not making plastic here in the desert, so that has to be transported by hand at least for now, because in the future we can get trains and trucks and all that jazz. After I brought some plastic over, I set up the circuit board assemblers over by the copper component building, then set up motors right next to where the rotors were, did another trip for plastic, set up heavy modular frame manufacturers, and that was just about all I could do for now. Until we have a way to get plastic into the desert automatically, I'm not going to bother setting up manufacturers to craft the computers themselves, because they take the plastic. Regardless, that is pretty much it. Aside from a few tiny missing pieces which we can take care of in the future, we can now produce the materials for one fuel generator every single minute. So the desert project is finally complete. Right, so now we can start thinking about getting our fuel gens up. Having just run back here, I now realize that I maybe should have grabbed the materials that we need to make those. I wasn't really thinking ahead. Real quick before we get moving on, I just want to show you guys all the pieces of paper that I had throughout this desert project that I was using to do like calculations and figuring out how I would lay stuff out. It's a lot bigger than I ever expected it to be. I thought I'd maybe use a couple pieces of paper, but no, we got all that stuff. When we do build this full gen thing right now, I'm just going to make it real quick and real simple just so we have enough power because right now we really don't. So yeah, I'm not going to set it up in a very aesthetically pleasing way at all, but I actually do have a plan for what I want our permanent, and I mean permanent, fuel power plant to look like. But we definitely don't have time to do that now. We've got just own, oh, just under five hours left. So I really don't have time to make this thing look good. I might end up building it in a second 100 Days in Satisfactory video if this one gets received well, or I might just build it in a future video where I'm just generally building factories. Kind of a more normal playthrough of Satisfactory. But we'll see how all that goes. I really don't have many plans for that right now. So the main things we're going to need to grab from here are heavy modular frames and motors and whatever components we need for computers. We'll grab, oh wow, that's a lot more than I thought I'd have, like this many, I guess. And we'll just grab all of them. And computer-wise, we'll probably just grab the circuit boards. That should be plenty. All right, well, I'll tell you what, I will meet you guys over at the oil plant and we'll get to building this thing. And I'm actually going to build it with you guys instead of doing a voiceover and a montage. Okay, first things first, grab a bunch of this, make a big old platform, not for the fuel generators, but for a manufacturer, which I need plastic for. Now, what I think we're going to have to do for setting up these fuel generators is power them up one by one, because look here, we're already using, oh wow. Yeah, okay, this is fluctuating a lot, but we have very limited time using more power than we're producing, and that's because of the desert project. So if you set them up one by one, we should be able to overcome that. So we'll just get the computers feeding into there, dump all of my circuit boards in there so they should fill up, and then we dump screws in, and then we need to grab plastic. There we go. So now we should, yes, start making constructors. We'll only get 2.5 per minute. So every two minutes, we'll be able to make a new fuel generator. Now I need to figure out where, I think this is it, right? So these are making the fuel and just to make sure, so are these? Yep, so the fuel is kind of ending up here and not doing anything. Uh, we've got four constructors making 40 per minute. That's 160. And these four are also making 40 per minute, 320. Can our pipes even carry that? No, that's not great, but I'm not gonna go back to base and unlock tier two pipes. So let's just say we have as much liquid. Oh, you know what, actually, no, screw that. Boom, split it into two. 160 there, 160 there. So our first fuel generator, man, that thing looks awesome. The important thing that I wanna know is, I uh, is not showing. Oh, there we go, there we go. Show now, no. Okay, Google it is. Twelve meters cubed of fuel per minute. 160 over twelve, because we have 160 per row. So we'll need 13.3 
fuel generators per row, so we'll need about 27 fuel generators. I think over here is kind of our only big open spot. I think this foundation is going to have to be huge. This isn't big enough yet, but I think this might be big enough for one row of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so that's half of them. Get a junction on each of these. Super easy. You can just hold control and it snaps. And there we go. Fuel should. Yes. Fuel. Fuel is moving to the power generators. You're getting power, yes? Yeah. It's burning fuel. Our production appears to be going up. It definitely is. It 100% is. It's going in a very awkward way, but it is going up. These produce 151 megawatts of power each, by the way, and we're going to have 26. So about 4,000 power from these things. A little bit less. We're definitely all right now to get the next ones going. Oh, this feels so good. This is like the desert project's finally paying off. That thing wore me down. It was a very long project, okay? And boom, that is the first 14 done. In other words, we're halfway, and I'm just going to double them like this. And just like that, the power is complete. We've got all 26 fuel generators down, and we are producing, if I can get down here, just over 7,000 power, and we're consuming just under 4,000 power. So, yeah. <laughs> we, we, that's what this was all for, this whole, the whole desert project. This is what it was for. <laughs> like I said, I do have plans for a much bigger fuel generator power plant with very nice designs and actual aesthetics planned out, but I'm not going to be doing that in this 100 days. I need to wait until update 6 comes out on official rather than the experimental branch because it is out on experimental now, because the region that that update is updating is where I want to build that. So now that our fuel is all sorted out, I've got something in mind that I want to try out and a place I've been wanting to explore since way earlier in this video. So let's go take a quick look in the hub. I want to try get a gas mask and go into that cave that we found way earlier, all the way by that uranium. Get in the cave! <gasps> I've made a grave mistake. And I've just realised that I came all the way over here, and I don't have any plastic. And since I'm going over there, I might as well bring over the stuff for this as well. <laughs> Alright, just gimme, 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 just unlock it, unlock it, that's enough. Wait, what? What? <sighs> Stop it! Stop looking at me! Give it! Thank you! I don't care! Now I need to go get more mycelia. What? What? Huh? Oh, okay. I went in there from the side, that's kind of cool. Back in the tingle cave. Mine, 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 mine. How much have we got? 172. Oh no. Nope. Okay. We're going. Incredible. Now give me this. Don't care. A hundred fabric. Fine. Gas mask. Okay, but we need gas canisters or whatever it was. Gas filters. <laughs> that makes way more sense. All right, if that's not enough, then I don't know what it is. Take some of the good food with me because I really don't know what I'm getting into. Let's make our way over to the cave. This might be really anticlimactic. This might be epic. Don't really know. But here we are. This is the cave. Let's chuck this guy on. I'm going to try and move my way through quick because I don't know how long these last. Whoa, boss. Oh. Is that it? I think that's it. Okay. This doesn't, doesn't go anywhere. No proper reward. No. <laughs> okay. Well, that was disappointing. Oh, this is still here. The gas mask was disappointing, but there is something else that I'm hoping won't be disappointing. The jetpack. So this is our next goal. So to do that, I don't really know what we're going to have to do. I guess we're going to make them in the constructor. Empty canisters, perfect, and they do cost the plastic. It is 30 plastic per minute to 60 canisters per minute. That seems easy enough. How much plastic am I producing here again? 20 per machine, 8 machines. So we're getting 160 plastic every minute. Maybe we just have 3 constructors, so we use 90 plastic per minute. Wait, no, that's not right. 2. 2 constructors, 60 per minute, and I'll just take 3 of these machines. So 1, 2, 3, and we'll cut this off here. I've also just realised these aren't in a straight line, and I hate my past self for it. I assume we're not only going to need the plastic to unlock the jetpack, but also to use it. And there we go. And there we go. So we're going to have 120 canisters per minute, which is actually quite a lot. And what do I need next? Uh, packager. Packaged fuel, that's what we need. 40 canisters. So we're going to need 3 packages and 120 fuel per minute. I didn't really think this through. So I've got all these here, but now I kind of need to siphon fuel off. But I guess it's only temporary, right? So what I think I'm going to do, kind of think that's the best option. And again, this is very temporary. Drag all our fuel up here. I think we actually might end up having a bit of a 
a blockage because this is 160. Or actually, when I got pipes mark two, valve used to limit pipeline flow rates. So let's put a junction here. Believe me, I have no idea how this is gonna work. Valve, um, we want that to go in that direction. Oh, sorry. Yep, and then configure it. So I want the valve limit here to be 120 per minute. So only 120 meters cubed of fuel per minute can go over there. And then the rest, in theory, I can just connect up to that, which might mean that these don't run very properly because that's only 40 fuel coming in. So we'll have like four of these maybe ish going, but it's better than having a clog up. Okay. Anyway, drag over here. We're going to have a slight new platform for our packages. One, two, three, smack them on, connect that up, package fuel. We're going to end up with 120 package fuel per minute. I think that's probably going to be plenty for the jetpack. Run that into there and there. And there, and there we go. We're getting fuel up here. We are. Canisters going in, we're getting the fuel going in, we're getting the package fuel. We're gonna get it in no time. Voila, we're getting package fuel. That was actually really simple. <laughs> I was kind of worried that we wouldn't have enough time, but no, that was easy. This is the time we're at, by the way. Come on, come on. Yes, 150. Let's go back to base. I am very excited to use this jetpack. I'm hoping it's good, because if it's bad, it's going to be a real bummer. It's also worth knowing that when update 6 does hit on the full release, you'll be able to use like all the accessory things at the same time. So that's like Blade Runners, Gas Mask, Jetpack. There is a hover pack later in the game, I do believe. So you'll be able to use them all at once when update 6 hits. And that's going to be insane. God, I hate that thing. Why did I do that? Please say I have everything I need. Jetpack. Nuts. I don't know if I have it. Ah, 50 motors. Yes. Bloop. Bloop. I mean, bloop. And then boom, boom. I'm very excited. Okay. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're getting a jetpack. We're getting a fucking jetpack. Okay. We got jetpack. There in the bottom left. And then. And then. <gasps> I'm just flying. Is there a height limit? I don't know. Oh, okay. You have to land to use another canister. Good to know. So it's like one fuel canister per flight and you can just turn off and on like this. This is going to be cool though. Uh, here's something that we're going to need to learn. If I go up to here, will it stop fall damage? Yes, it does. When I can use the Blade Runners and the jetpack and everything else all at once is going to be amazing. But what I want to test out because I do need to go to the desert because I have like no motors left. How will it affect this? Um, I mean, it's normal so far. This is about when I would start using my parachute. I'm trying to just maintain height a bit. I am thinking maybe the parachute. Oh, did I just use all my fuel? Oh, oh no, I would have survived. Damn it! Okay, maybe we should, <laughs> maybe we should keep using the parachute for that. And we're back at the hub. Yeah. Eat some nuts while I'm flying through the sky. Yum yum in my belly. This one? Was it this one? Was it this one? <gasps> there it is. My crate. Okay. Whoa, that's a lot of stuff. I'm running out of stuff to do. I can't start a new project. Tell you what I can do. I could. I could make a leap towards our completely permanent main base in the future because I'm pretty confident I know where I want that to be. So this is our, I mean, it's not really, but this is sort of our main base right now. It's where the hub is basically. So I want a way to get straight from here to where I want the main base to be. The map is not as updated as I would like. I want to say pretty much that direction. That'll help me remember which way it is. And now we need to build another hypertube launcher. I think that's gonna be okay. We'll smack the jetpack on so we can soften our landing and not die! Oh. Okay. okay. It is longer. Oh. Okay. Is that even an improvement? <laughs> I think it was a little bit. Okay. It's better. It's definitely better. That is better. Oh no 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 no. Okay. I held S. I didn't know that stopped it. Okay, this is a lot more power. It seems to kind of like multiply as you go along. Let's try the jetpack. And now, whoa! Okay, that's 100% better. 
I was holding S here, by the way, which is why we stopped. But that's definitely not going to send us far enough, which is why I was holding S. It's an additional three entrances. Come on. Shoot us insanely far. Oh, that's far. That's far. That might be far enough. And actually, I don't know exactly where I needed to go. So this is good, except for the fact that it's really foggy and I'm going to have to find my way back. Where am I? Oh boy. So, the place where I'm going is a giant hole in the earth. Maybe this is it. Is this the waterfall that goes to the giant hole in the earth? It is! It is! Oh. Okay. Okay. Stay calm. <laughs> I actually think it's more down there where I wanted to build. This is where we came out of a cave on the way back home from exploring. I'm very excited for this. I've got a couple project ideas in mind, aka this and the fuel gen factory, and I really can't wait to go working on them and to make something that actually looks good. But now I have the very long journey of getting back to base. Whilst we're making this journey back to base, I just wanna say, if you've made it to this point in the video, thank you. Thank you so much for the support. If you haven't already, I'd appreciate if you could just leave a like or a comment. Literally saying anything in a comment would make my day, just showing that you guys enjoyed it. This video has taken upwards of four months to make, so it'd really mean the world to me. But anyways, more on that later. Back to the last couple of hours of our 100 days. Once I'd arrived back at the base, I had a gander of the components needed for the third space elevator upgrade, and dropped off a full bin of versatile framework to the elevator. I then decided to unlock the last milestone available to us with the second space elevator upgrade, which was the monorail train technology upgrade. I then spent the last 16 awesome shop coupons that I had available, and at that point our 100 days was pretty much up. This thing's so cool. I could have maybe done with less power. Oh, I was just holding space. That's not good. I did not know I was doing that. I can see literally nothing. Map? Map? Oh no! 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 I'm outside the map! That's the map border! Can I use this to get back in? In time? No, it's not a chance. I'm dead. <gasps> I'm alive. Okay, so now comes the point in the video where I pretty much just sit here and talk to you about stuff for a little while. Kind of a recap over this whole 100 days, which is an insanely long period of time, by the way. 100 hours of gameplay. Normally, an episode would be like two hours of gameplay, if that. Depends on what the game is. That was it, four below zero. Anyway, some of the statistics for this video, as in the amount of footage I have and the music and the dates I was working on it, it, they're pretty insane. I have a total of 388 gigabytes of footage. If I knew a way to figure out how many hours of recording that was, that would be awesome, but I don't. Um, and like I said, the master list of music, every song that I've used in this video is going to be in the description. There'll be some links to some of the people who I could find, like C418, Kevin McLeod, Ben Sound, Sleepers Delight, and even if they're not linked, the title of the song and the name of the artist is in the description below. So I started working on Satisfactory, as in, I started my save on the 23rd of March. As I mentioned right at the start of this video, the first, I think it was something like 37 hours, that could be exaggerating, but I think it's something like 37 hours, I didn't plan to be a 100 days video, that was supposed to be just a normal series, but the progression was going really slowly, and I kind of felt like it was boring, so I thought a 100 days video would be a great way to like, just brrr, all the way through the progression because the progression can, can be quite slow at the start of Satisfactory, at least definitely when you don't know what you're doing, which was my case. So I thought 100 days was a great way to just skip ahead and get to the good stuff, which is why at this point, because I've got so much unlocked, I'm happy with just doing a more regular, you know, build by build series or working on a project each episode rather than another 100 days, which I am also happy to do if that's what you guys want. But it was around the start of April that I figured out, yeah, I want to do this 100 days video and not make it a series. So it was just over a month of me working on it as a series, and then I started working on it as 100 days. So in total, I've been working on since the start of the save to at least when I'm recording today, is about 150 days or five months. It's going to be in and about there because I've still got stuff to do like thumbnails, I need to finish up the editing and stuff like that. But as of right now, that's how long I've been working on it, which is nuts. Overall, I'm insanely happy with how it turned out. It's obviously my first time doing such a massive video like this. I think it was really a challenge and I did struggle with a lot of it, but I think it's turned out nicely. Um, I do. To put it bluntly, I really do hope this video performs well. So 
if if you guys are still here i think that just about proves that you've enjoyed the video and if that's the case please just leave a like or a comment comment literally anything i do not care what you comment you could comment that i'm terrible at building factories i don't care just to show that people actually have enjoyed it and so it was worth working on it for five months. I don't know, I hate begging for likes and stuff like that, but this has been such a humongous video. Do let me know if you want another 100 days, or if you think it'd be better to continue this in a more series type fashion, where we work on a Project E video, each video. Ultimately, I just want to know what your thoughts are on this and on the future, if you've enjoyed it and what you want to see next and all that jazz. I should also probably mention that no matter what your guys' feedback is, whether you want another 100 days or whether you want a normal series, I probably won't start working on those next steps in Satisfactory until update six has hit the main branch of the game and I don't know when that's gonna happen. But yeah, that's kind of all I can think to say. So thank you all so much for watching, especially again, if you've made it to this point in the video, your support means the absolute world to me. I mean, I don't know if I would have sat through this bit. I wouldn't be able to do any of this stuff without you and I'm super excited for what comes next. So thank you for watching and I'll see you all in whatever it is that comes next. Bye guys!